$50, say I'm worth, you think of yourself as being worth $50 an hour, and then somebody asks you to, you to draw something, and you say, okay, it might take me about five hours to do that. So you do five times 50, and that'll give you that range that you'll charge there that person. Go. But you don't tell them you're $50 no. an hour. No. You just give them that rate, but you have a you have a scale for yourself that you price yourself exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I've done that plenty of times. Then it would help artists kind of give you that start of that balance. One of the things that I started doing when I began uh, doing graphic design and web design, um, I called other agencies. I called other designers. I, this is before the internet was what it is today. I'm talking not too long ago, but it was a while ago. And I didn't know what to charge, I didn't know what to uh, do. Um, and so well, that's what you do, you start making phone calls, say I got a logo design I need done, you know, what are, what are your charges, what are your prices. And they tell you, they treat you like a customer and they give you the quote and so on, and now you know. And then you call the next one. But nowadays you have websites and so on, information online, and like you mentioned, the pricing guidelines, so now you can use those. Um, even when I was doing construction, there used to be a book for, uh, for how, long a wall, how long a wall is and how long should it take you and how much should you charge. So we have those resources now, but even if that fails, just call somebody up and say, look, I need a photography job. It is going to take three people, two locations, five dressing changes, you know, so on and so forth. I need two photographers, how much does that cost? And you start asking those questions around and you start putting together an outline of where your skill level is. What is it that it's going to take for you to actually uh, pay some of your bills for the work that you're doing? And then you, your price will work accordingly. But as time goes on and you start getting paid for that, for, at that level, uh, you start establishing what it's going to cost you, how long it takes you. The more you do it, the more you'll realize how long it really takes you so that if you need to increase the price or you're okay with that price, never drop it down, but always can go up. And so that's how you end up building your business. And now... Many times, many years later, I think I get quotes just because they want to know what they're going to charge, you know, other people. So, Miles Davis got a question. You have to take each each situation dependently on what's going on, and also yeah, right. in the psychology. I'm gonna tell you, it's constantly changing. It still answers your question. It works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. I mean, all of us artists are kind of strange anyway. Okay, <laughs> and, 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 and you're and, strange. And, yeah, let's get real. There's days I'm in a great mood. I can kick some butt on a painting and do it in one week, and maybe some days I might take a month. Now that's not gonna work no longer with an hourly rate, is it? No. And now if you're forced to do an hourly rate and your client thinks, okay, she's going to have ready eight hours. They, they are, man, they got their watch. They're watching. Eight hours, I'm going to have my thing. What if you're not in that mood? What if you're, you're just not there sometimes? Okay, now they're looking at you funny. Like, you said it was going to be eight hours. I'm ready to hang it on the wall. I got a party tonight. Where is that thing? <laughs> you know, but, but right now, I mean, I'm working on, what did you just say, projects right now? You're just saying like a low of things are coming in. And if you don't have that much work coming in at the time. Right. Right. You know, there's a lot of games we can play, and I love the barter system too. Because sometimes I'm just in the mood where it's like, you know what, I like that restaurant. And I like to take my friends and ladies and friends over there, and you know, I, w I want the red carpet treatment for six months. I'll do that painting for you, but I want that little card I can put in my wall that I can come up in there every day and not have to pay for anything for six months. Okay? So we have <laughs> options to do really cool things like this. Trust me. I've gotten everything that I needed that I didn't have by bartering. I did that with Subway one time. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah that's they called. hated me there that's after a while. Right. Did it work? Yeah. yeah. But this kind of stuff works because we have basic needs, too. We need to eat. We need to have clothes. And we need to have recreation. I factor all that in my work. Because like I said, when I have those loaves, I'm like, okay, who am I going to barter with today? I like this, mm -hmm. I like that. I'm like, okay, and, I, I, and that actually does work, okay? 
And then another thing I do that really, really is, once again, it's about branding. It's about getting it out there again. It's like I live out of my trunk sometimes, my car. Everywhere I go, I'm going to hand out a little something to somebody I know, you know? Not just a business car. I mean, I have, like, prints in my trunk and, and little easels of, of my work. So I'm always constantly leaving a piece of my work behind somebody. I don't count figures. I don't think, oh, geez, I just spent how much on ink and print and paper. You know, I sometimes wig out. But <laughs> everybody I know has a piece of work signed by me with a real autograph on it. And, and it's special to them. And they, once again, it's psychology. They remember this kind of stuff. They go, oh, as soon as I hand my business card out, everybody identifies with it. They say, I've seen that somewhere. Everywhere I go, I've seen that, I've seen that, I've seen that. And then that's when those numbers start to change with art because they now start to psychologically identify you with success. And then with success, now they are more freer to spend more money because they know this artist is going somewhere, they think. They think this artist has really got something rolling here now. You know, everywhere I go, I see his brand, I see his signature, I see somebody talking about it. That starts to translate to more success. No, go ahead. You got something to say? Go ahead. I uh, wanted to open nah, it up. Pretty much that was. I have a question. Who got the question? I, I have mm -hmm. a question. Uh, this is a dilemma that I found uh, myself in my own painting and illustration uh, business. Um, when I saw my paintings, I was raised on comic books. Uh, I was raised on graphic design, and, uh, and, and so up until this point, I've been signing all my paintings with my initials, like a little comic book, essentially, mm -hmm. like a D, and that's it. Uh, it's a pretty simple signature. Anybody can basically copy it. And what made me think of this is what you just said, but they have my original signature on that. And it's like, so when a signature is something is simple enough where you can just sign, then you almost copy it, in a sense. And somebody decided they wanted to copy it. Um, from your experience as a fine arts fan, um, would you suggest that I start signing all my paintings with my, my full name? Um, not your how full you, name. How do you sign your work? What are you supposed to sign? Yeah, that's actually a great question. That's a great question. Because I know your style is also part of your signature. It sure you know, is. It took. Yes, once again, it's going to be, you know, when you, when you get to that level now of getting into the galleries and the museums and those higher levels, we didn't even discuss that yet. We need to go there. You know, now the authenticity.